What's up guys, Jamison Redding here with the Road Trip Angler, and today I'm gonna to be walking you through how I rigged out my new canoe, Pursuit. You may have already seen my full review of this boat on the channel. If not, I'm gonna drop the link in the description and I go through everything I like about this kayak. But I thought in this video, it might be nice to just kind of walk you guys through what I did and where I put things on the boat so that I could fish the way I like to fish. Also, I think this boat is gonna be the perfect boat for sight fishing for redfish. So having the ability to move things around on this track and change it up, depending on what type of fishing I'm doing, is gonna be so key. Let's start right here with this slotted console, which is a new product from Boondocks. And immediately when I saw that and knew I was getting the pursuit, I felt like this was gonna be the perfect setup to be able to rig my fish finder, but also for rod staging. I like to have a couple of different rods usually staged out in front of me with a couple of different baits, especially if I'm sight fishing and I try one bait or I'm blind casting something and then I see a fish and I wanna throw a different lure, I can have a few rods staged out. So I wanted to do that and it gives me the ability to have my net staged and also that's where I mounted that GoPro while I was on the water. Having those tracks down both sides here in this little front squared off area of the boat made this super easy to install and I really like it. I can take it on and off the boat very quickly because it's only in the tracks. I had to drill nothing. But having that fish finder in the center keeps it out of the way of my paddle stroke. It's right where I need it to be when I'm you know, trying to look at it and I don't have to worry about when I'm landing a fish, which side I'm landing it on because I don't have that big fish finder in the way when I'm trying to bring a fish in the boat. On that console, you'll see I've got a couple of Naqua batteries. One of those was there to run my GoPro while I was filming the review. And the other one is actually what I'm running my Lowrance off of. Now I mentioned in the review, if you saw that video, that I'm gonna take the new, or at least try to take the new short stack from Yak Attack, which comes in all the different sizes, but in the 13 by 13 inch size, I think I'll be able to rig myself up kind of a battery management box that will fit perfectly right here in this squared off area of the boat. That should help me eliminate having two separate batteries and I can just fix that with a couple of USB ports so I can plug my GoPros in, be able to run those, and also be able to run that LaRanche unit at the same time. Moving back a bit, you'll see I have the quick connects yeah, quick connect system from New Canoe. Now that was something that I mentioned earlier in the review as well that I was a little bit skeptical about. I liked the idea of it being a one foot operation type setup. And I also like how quick and easy it is to take on and off the back of the boat. However, I was worried that I wouldn't be able to steer as sharp, but I was pleasantly surprised that you do get quite a bit of turn radius out of that system. And even though it's gonna take me a little bit of getting used to, just because I'm used to pushing either foot one way or the other, this allows me to keep one foot completely doing whatever, just sitting comfortably, and only use the other foot to steer the boat. On this side of the boat, it come with the pulley pre-installed, and it also already had this cleat pre-installed in that quick connect kit. I actually got the uh, handle here that you use to pull the motor up and down. It also came with some line. I did swap that out for some tan colored line just to match kind of the theme of how I'm setting the boat up. Other than that, this area is pretty much standard. I did run my transducer cable on the outside of the boat and I'll show you that as we move back. But for now, I'm gonna step back into the seating area so to show you how I have that set up. Around the seating area, I've got a couple of things going on. One of the first things I did was add a short piece of Yak Attack gear track to both sides of the boat on the gunnel. And that just gave me the ability to add a couple of more mounts to have for the rod staging and also for my paddle. I used the double header from Yak Attack in the tan color to get the paddle outside of the boat, which cleaned up the space in here. Plus I was struggling to use that actual paddle stager only because I have that Torquedo throttle on this side and on the other side I have my rods staged out. So moving that paddle out opened up the space for me. If I was only gonna be paddling the boat, I wouldn't need this and I would only use probably the way it, the boat comes and just use that stager that's on the inside. But when I'm motorizing, I can get away with having things kind of in my paddle stroke, if you will. On the side of the seat here, you'll see I've got the Torquedo throttle, and that's actually mounted 
to the track that's in the floor of the boat on a Yak Attack Torquedo throttle mount. So that made it really clean and simple and kept it low profile and right beside my seat. I found that to be very comfortable and I could put it on either side of the boat. Right now I have it on the right hand side. I noticed a couple of times I reached for it on the left hand side. So I may move that over and that would clean up this space where I could actually take advantage of having my rods stored in the rod tubes if I needed to and I could bring the paddle back inside the boat. That is pretty sweet. On the left hand side of the seating area, you'll see I've got one of the Jackson Kayak three rod stagers mounted to that track. But this keeps the rods just slightly outbound of the boat or kind of splitting the gunnel, if you will. I found that great. It didn't interfere with my foot control at all. And I'm able to use those roto grips up front on that slotted console from Boondocks to stage those rods out. I can get up to three rods, really more if I wanted to, but three rods, no issue. They're secure, I can bungee them on the side of the boat, and they're out of the way from when I'm standing in the cockpit, and they're out of the way from when I'm steering the motor. Just behind that rod stager, I have the sling blade, which is my transducer deployment system from Yak Attack. There were two quarter 20 threaded inserts on that side of the boat. And I think that's for the stick steer quick connect setup. So it's got a hand steering mechanism, or you can use the foot control, which is what I have but those two inserts provided a space for me to be able to mount that sling blade and have that transducer easy to get to and out of my paddle stroke so I can raise and lower that. If you remember, I mentioned that there is no transducer specific scupper hole on this kayak. It came out really before transducers were as big and bulky as they are now. And it was designed actually for the transducer to shoot through the hole. But with modern transducers having the down imaging and side scan, that really doesn't work. So adding that sling blade makes it really easy to pull that out of the water. So when I'm covering distance, I don't have to worry about that drag, but when I wanna use it, I can just deploy it quickly and again, didn't have to drill a hole to put that in the boat. I mentioned in the review that you can easily fit the 13 by 16 inch black pack back here. Obviously the 13 by 13 would fit as well. I went with the 13 by 16, gives me a little more storage. I've got it set up with five of the rod holders. So three across the back and then two angled back. You also have the flush mounts that come standard. I just added a couple of the track mounted eye bolts, again from Yak Attack on the side and some bungee to be able to strap that black pack into the boat. I got my Torquedo battery stood up here and strapped to the black pack as well. So everything feels really secure and has a place. And there's still tons of room behind the seat if I needed to throw another bag or a cooler or even some tackle back there because I have the seat as far forward really as I can get it and still steer properly because I felt like the more weight I got forward, the better off I would be. Behind here is where I have the Quick Connect system and the Torquedo 1103 set up. Now you kind of take the mount and the brackets and everything that comes with the Torquedo 1103 and you discard that and connect it to their Quick Connect system. Some of the things I really, really like about this is how simple and easy it is. You literally just take this ball off here. Now that that's disconnected, you just pull this pin and you can lift the whole motor off the transom. One of the other things that I liked about it is that it kind of retains the down position. There's a little ball in there that clicks into place when it's in the down position. And that allowed me to go into reverse very easily without lifting the motor out of the water. Now, if I went full throttle, it would break away and come up, but I'm able to utilize reverse without having to deal with a reverse lock, which I really, really liked. I did kind of modify the lifting mechanism a little bit on this motor or this setup. So it comes in the Quick Connect system with all the line you need to be able to lift the motor up and down. However, I added the pulley and went back to another eye bolt to the track to be able to get a little bit of a mechanical advantage when lifting and lowering that motor. Other than that, it's pretty much standard. And that's all I did. I didn't drill any holes other than those two pieces of tracks and everything just kind of went on the tracks where I wanted it and I never felt like I didn't have a place to mount something. Well, there you have it. How I rigged my new canoe pursuit. I really like this setup. It's one of my favorite setups that I've done so far when it comes to rigging. It was really easy with all the track. I didn't have to drill any holes other than adding those two 
pieces of track on each side. All my wiring and everything is external, which is nice because I do switch boats a lot. And I can actually just take this console, take this fish finder, take the transducer and move it to another boat very easily with no issue at all. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe. If you'd like to see the full review I did of the new Canoe Pursuit, check the link in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching.